In order. Everybody have a chance to take a look at the minutes. Move for approval. Is that a motion? Second. Moved and seconded. Any discussion on the minutes? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Minutes are approved. Uh, discussion and possible action on uh, final plat Carmichael Ridge 99 one family lots and 11 out lots MI Homes LLC. The um, final plat for the Carmichael Ridge, uh, this would be phase one. Uh, they have a total of 145 approved lots. Uh, this would be phase one, 99 lots. Uh, Mr. John Rask is here tonight to have a, have a discussion in regards to this. The final plat is in compliance with the preliminary plat approved by the plan commission. Also is uh, compliant with the master plan for the Carmichael Ridge planned residential development, which is approved by the plan commission and the common council. Uh, I'm recommending approval of the final plat with the condition that the plat cannot be filed with the St. Croix Register of Deeds until a surety of 120% of the estimated cost of street, curb and gutter, sanitary sewer, water, stormwater utilities, sidewalks, pathways, street lighting and other improvements um, are as surety is made either that or the, the improvements are made and accepted by the city of Hudson execution of a development agreement with the city of Hudson and no building permits will be issued until streets are sufficiently constructed to allow emergency access to construction sites. Uh, Mr. John Rask is here tonight to answer any questions or generally present the plat if you have, have any questions or concerns to discuss with John. Questions? I have a question for Denny about the Ward Avenue extension is I see that you say it needs to be accessible for emergency f to the construction site. So is that what I'm seeing is it's <coughs> going to be a uh, the, the, the preliminary the access will be coming initially it will be coming off of Carmichael Road on the access between Culver's and the former clubhouse. Okay. And then going west, then that road will terminate. So at the terminus of that road, there have to be a temporary round or temporary cul-de-sac on that. In 2017, Ward Avenue is required as an agreement with the city of Hudson to be constructed before October 15th of 2017. Okay. So what I'm seeing here is just the build up to, which will eventually be the start of Ward Avenue. Well, or is that an emergency road, access? That that roadway will go all the all all the way south to Cooley Road uh, in 2017. So also, also, Ward Avenue will be constructed from the West Property Line next to Plaza 94 to that southerly roadway, which is Hillcrest Drive. But in that in that orientation, is going north and south. Okay, so nothing on this plan is being on this phase one. Southern, the southern portion of that plan is not being constructed. It's basically the, the north two thirds of, of the development. So the Ward Avenue is not an issue here? Not tonight. Not tonight. Okay. That, yeah, that's and it's what required I to be constructed in 2017. Okay. Thank you. They could construct it this year, but it's, they're not planning on doing it. I will move for approval with uh, the stipulation that Danny has stated uh, that the developer be required to you know, conform to all, I can't remember what they all, Danny, but all the things that you said, um, and to move ahead with that. Is there a second? I'll second yes. it. There's two of you at the same time. Kurt? Sure. Okay, we've got a motion and a second. Any other discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion's approved. Thank you, John. Discussion and possible action <coughs> on a request to have city staff review access to and the provision of sanitary sewer to 4.33 acre parcel on east side of Carmichael Road, north of St. Croix Meadows site, Gerard Corporation, Paul Gerard. Yeah, Gerard's uh, proposed to construct a mixed-use um, multiple-family uh, project, also mixed-use of commercial, 
This parcel is a remnant parcel left over from the alignment of Carmichael Road back in the 1990s. Um, to the south of the lot is this uh, former St. Croix Meadows site. And to the east of the lot is the city of Hudson parcel. And, uh, and there's a map on your uh, that I provided tonight and also was in the packets. Um, the issue with this particular parcel, because it's a remnant parcel, it did not have sanitary sewer and water uh, placed to it. It's uh, kind of on an awkward position on Carmichael Road. Um, what uh, Paul Gerard and I have talked about is getting authorization for the city staff to look at the sanitary sewer uh, issue. Sanitary sewer has three options to go south to the general access to the former St. Croix Meadow site or to go north to Maxwell Drive. Both are about 800, I believe about 800 foot lengths of extension of sanitary sewer. The third option uh, would be the possible boring underneath Carmichael Road and, and uh, tying into uh, the, the sanitary system over there. However, in that case, we'd have to be very careful that sanitary sewer is sized uh, to accommodate that flow. Um, <coughs> the other issue is the access to Carmichael Road. Again, it's on the radius of Carmichael Road. Uh, to get to the site, they would have to go down to Albert <coughs> Street, go south, and then go uh, on the frontage road on the north side of the former dog track parcel and then go up and in. There's some uh, request, there's a request by Gerard's for the city to take a look at where they're a median. Uh, the median of Carmichael Road could be cut into to allow a southbound left turn into this site. I guess our concern is you've got the access coming north that merges with Carmichael Road, then all of a sudden you're introducing a, a, a cross uh, traffic motion at, at a non-typical intersection. So <coughs> we haven't spent a lot of time on this. What they're asking for is and allow uh, some time to Mr. Gerard uh, tonight to explain the project uh, would be to for the city staff to take a look at these two issues um, and then come back with recommendations as to whether the access to Carmichael Road <coughs> and how the sanitary sewer system may work. At that, I'd like to turn it forward to Paul Gerard uh, for any discussions. If you have any questions of, of me, uh, uh, try uh, tripod, Paul. You, you want to pull that out over on the other side? You can. Good evening, gentlemen. Amy. Mayor, um, back in uh, about 2003, the Planning Commission and Council approved a new ordinance that allowed for a development of this type that stands today at uh, 901 Dominium on Husford there, Husford and Dominium, and we've had a very successful track record with occupancy and uh, commercial tenants, mixing your new allowed use with blending your commercial or B2 into uh, for housing for uh, seniors. Um, the housing would be dedicated for uh, 55 or better. Um, we have an extensive wait list. We've built four properties in your community, um, uh, starting with St. Croix Village, Boulder Ridge, Heritage Cottages, and Heritage Cottages Two. Um, we have an extensive wait list <coughs> for our apartments, so we're hoping that you can give us a little bit of direction on this site. What we'd like to do and we would propose to do is see what the direction you'd like to give us, but we would be willing to extend, I think it's Maxfield Street? Maxwell. Direction. Maxwell um, <coughs> to the point where it could be, a, <coughs> could be built to city spec, um, we would extend utilities down that road, um, and it could be private for a point in time until uh, the city decides what they would like to do with the property that would be just east of that drive, and it's my understanding that the city owns the 20 acres. Um, so 
we would like to kind of work hand in hand with you. Um, there isn't a whole pile of affordable housing around in your community. And <clears throat> we're just looking for a little bit of direction from you uh, on a parcel that was <clears throat> really, I didn't, I never knew it existed. So I'm quite happy that the real estate agent pointed it out, but now it has some difficulties and we would kind of like to see uh, what, what you'd like to do, how we should move forward. Um, I have Todd Erickson here, who's the uh, project arch uh, engineer. The architecture would be similar to something that you'd see at Boulder Ridge. We would present something very nice. Um, we're already working on uh, some office tenants, but it's a little too early for us to start marketing that. But um, <coughs> so Todd's here to present a, you know, what I just outlined. Um, and we would just like to know how we should move forward and and you asking or are commissioning um, city staff here to move forward on some type of a development agreement for access. May I ask a question? Um, sure. If it's housing for the elderly, 55 and older, uh, this not being in a residential district and having to come off a 45 mile an hour speed limit or or unless we get this max fall or you can mm -hmm. come in from another direction, is that of any concern to you? It would be to me a little bit, you know, well, if you had to, you know, be coming down a half fast road, older people to turn and all that kind of thing. The access at just a right in, right out, there are four lanes there of which two are never used because as the on-ramp is coming up from the old dog track, right. the street's actually starting to deteriorate because it's just not, not being used. used. And, and I've, been in, I've been up here in the morning, in the afternoon. I haven't been up here at 5 o'clock to see the rush hour going <coughs> home. But as, uh, I mean, our, our vehicle trips are not such that they would be for a family. So if this was a family project, uh, I would say that we could not get by with the right in, right out, but we would like to negotiate and really extend uh, Maxfield down and the developer would, would bore the cost of that. <coughs> so. Okay, thank you. Right. Now you mentioned low income housing. Are you looking at just the elderly? Or are you restricting it? Are you going to open up to Section 8 or all that? <coughs> the development would be for 55 or better. Um, we have three properties right now that we uh, operate. Um, so the, there is a slice of housing of, uh, set aside here for disabled American veterans. So we would have some market rate stuff in, in this development we'd have some 60% of the county median income and there'd also be some 30% set-asides. And those 30% set-asides would be marketed to disabled veterans and they would also have support services. Yeah. So I, I think that we would be a very quiet, nice neighbor. I don't, and our, our current office tenant uh, at uh, 901 is the hospital. So the hospital has counseling services in our existing facility. <coughs> Todd, do you want to give a little? Well, I, I can say, I can go through what I have to ask. I don't know the full honest project, but the, uh, the parcel does, uh, represent, does have some difficulties. We would be extending that road down uh, on Maxwell and there's existing sewer there and water bring bring to there. Uh, the, the water, the, the drainage from the site comes off of the hill um, to the east and then it's it basically captured in a, in a swale along the, uh, along the west side of Carmichael. We'd be just drawing that water around and then uh, treating that water in the pond and the infiltration system behind the, the structure. The building itself would actually sit down a little bit into the, uh, off the uh, height, uh, height of the roads, the height of the building. <coughs> Reduced a little bit for, for visual impact from that standpoint. Um, other than that, we you know, we're looking at the possibility of a right in, right out. And, you know, and we wanted to look at a possibility of a, a left turn thing. We 
was having some difficulty with that. And um, <coughs> May not may not work with with the county and the cities uh, for traffic uh, movements or anything, but we did want to explore the opportunity there if there is one. Um, Are you building one or two buildings? We have two on here. Yeah, actually, we, well, we had looked at we like looked at uh, the first phase would be one building and then second building would be, would be lot one, lot two. So there's, there's some options there as far as what uh, lot two will actually end up looking like in, like in the future. But it's some we're basically looking at a mirrored project. Mm -hmm. The building itself would be slab on grade and then have a basement to it. It'd be, um, so it'd be parking and then, and then the parking uh, structures above it. Uh, yeah, the building would be very similar to what we built over there at Husford and Dominium with all the parking underneath the building um, at grade, um, um, reducing you know the, the green space. And then Todd just pointed out, I think what we would also do too there along the road, we might create a little bit of berm and some landscaping so that it would be nice for the, for the seniors as well. So we're just, we're looking for direction from. But, yeah, what I'm asking for is the uh, authorize the city staff to review the road access and the ac accessibility to the sanitary sewer, the cost for our city staff to do that will be paid for by Mr. Gerard, so they reimburse our time for doing that. What I'm trying to avoid is for them to spend a lot of time on this. We get into detailed, con you know, getting into more detailed concepts and we're arguing about <coughs> the roadway access. We're arguing about the sanitary sewer. So let's let the city staff look at those issues, get a report back to Gerard's, which they can then base, if they want to proceed, and base their concept and present. So we don't get into this argument on accessibility and so forth. You need a motion from us for that or no? Yes, please. Well, then I will make that motion that the city explore and report back, work with Gerard to come up with if there's any amicable solution that can be made to the issues at hand. Second. <laughs> okay, we've got a motion and a second. <clears throat> Further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion's approved. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Aye. Thank you. <clears throat> Discussion and possible action on a request for rezoning 21 acres at the southeast quadrant of State Highway, Trunk Highway 35 and Hanley Road from B2 General Business District and R1 One Family Residential District to I1 Light Industrial District and to <coughs> amend the 2009 City of Hudson Comprehensive Plan future land use from general business to industrial, Northern States Power. Okay, Northern States Power has purchased this 21 acre parcel located at the southeast quadrant of State Trunk Highway 35 and Hanley Road. Um, three of the 21 acres was within the city of Hudson, actually was a remnant parcel left over from the area where Uline uh, facility is now located. And that's due because that was one larger parcel than when Highway 35 was relocated to the west to cut that parcel in, in parts or just a very sliver, small sliver of land on the east side of State Trunk Highway 35. That land is in, the, that three acres is in the, was in the city, uh, Northern Space Power, City of Hudson and next uh, east 18 acres. So that's the reason there's two different zoning classifications. The parcel that was previously in the city was zone B2. When the 18 acre parcel was brought into the city, the zoning by ordinance is required to go to R1, one family residential. They're asking to be able to rezone the property to I1, light industrial, which is uh, the same as what Uline has, which the St. Croix Business Park has both to the west and to the south of this parcel. So they're consistent with existing zoning uh, and to uh, have the consistency between the comp plan and the zoning. We're also recommending that the 2009 Hudson Comprehensive Plan future land use designation be changed from general business to industrial. Um, and that's my recommendation to approve the zoning request and the comprehensive plan amendment request. Any questions, Mr. Matt Wolke and Brian 
Al Wood from Excel Energy and Northern States Power here tonight to answer any questions. I'll move we uh, approve the recommendation of staff. And I'll second. Okay. Got a motion and a second. Discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion's approved. The public hearing on that issue is next Monday night with the Common Council. Okay. Thank you. Discussion and possible action on a request for rezoning 623rd Street from R2, two family residential, two, yeah, two family residential district to B3 Central Business District, Jean Dubois. I'd like to uh, at least discuss both six and seven together because they're adjacent properties located <coughs> just north of us on Third Street. Uh, so, Rick, can you want to read off number six so we'll discuss them both at the same time? Uh, or number seven. Number seven. I'm sorry. Okay. Please discussion please. of possible action on a request for rezoning 614 Third Street from R2, two family residential district, to B3, Central Business District, DPB Investments LP. Both these parcels are located on the east side of Third Street, just north between um, Locust Street and Vine Street. The um, zoning on the parcels was retained as R2, two-family residential. When we did the comp plan, uh, we proposed rezoning the property to B3 Central Business District. At the time, the property owners did not want to do that because they had existing residential. They didn't want the properties to go to a non-conforming use. So we honored that. So the comprehensive plan designation is Central Business District. So the zoning change from R2 to the B3 Central Business District is consistent with the comprehensive plan. So with that uh, request by both property owners, I would recommend approval of both the rezoning at 620 3rd Street, uh, requested by Jeannie Dubois, and also uh, 614 3rd Street from R2, to, and that's requested by DPB Investments. Uh, and the zoning change would be from R2, two-family residential district, to B3, central business district. Right. I know you mailed out, you know, this notice to the neighbors. Did you get any replies back, any comments of any type? Okay. Is there a change in use happening, or is this just a... Well, the, the, the uh, uh, one of the parties is here tonight. Uh, uh, Ms. Wall had mentioned in her application she intends to sell the property. Uh, the issue with that particular property is a single family home. If, they're gonna, if they tear the building down and redevelop, that's one issue. If they plan to use the existing home for commercial uses, you know, the building inspectors and I have always been very careful in having discussions with parties that want to have a single family home used for commercial because all of a sudden you gotta make conversions for access for commercial use. Uh, including, you know, ADA, disability access, and so forth. So I, I don't know what, where she, she wants to sell the property. That's, that's her intention. Uh, DPB Investments, the Bakis are here tonight, and they, you know, they can mention what their, if, if they'd like to discuss their intentions with you. But they're, they're looking at the possibility of expanding multiple family residential, which is, which is a permitted use. Just, I'd like to hear. I mean, I'd like to hear what you got planned, if you don't mind. Uh, well, my name is Roy Bobby, and uh, we currently own the apartment building right adjacent to that property, and we're currently uh, converting the home so that we can rent it, so that we meet all the weatherization codes, etc. And I, I expect that we will probably rent that home. I'm guessing three to five years as, as a home. And then our long-term plan is we've been working with Denny as to what can go in there as an apartment building that will be compatible with our building right next door. We want to be sure that we've got sufficient parking and the lot as it exists right now will allow for what we're currently looking at. So just an apartment building right next to that. We found that having the apartments right downtown has been very good for the especially for the kids that work downtown. 
same approximate size as your existing building, you would? No, it, 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 uh, the current lot would not allow that same size building. I think currently we could get up to nine units, if I remember correctly, it, it, you know, and still have sufficient parking. Okay. okay. Are you acquiring the other lot then to uh, potentially expand? Gene, Gene is here, and we've been talking. Well, I'm yeah. And, and our, well, our long-term goal would be to, to purchase her property because then we could, then we could have a better fit for a, another building in there. But again, Gene and I are talking and we're, we're moving ahead, but we'll just see what happens. You know, she has to do what's right for her and her family. Thank you. Okay, any other questions? Anybody? Thank you. Thanks, Dwayne. So you need two separate motions, one for each application. Yep. I'll move to approve um, number six request for zoning on 620 3rd Street from R2 residential to B3 Central Business D District regarding the Dubois property. Second. Okay, got a motion and a second. Further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion is approved. And I might as well do the second one. I will. Request that we rezone 614 3rd Street from R2 to B3 Central Business, Central Business District, excuse me, uh, DPB Investments. Is there a second? I'll second. Okay, got a motion and a second. Discussion? I was getting tired. Yeah. We're, we're doing all the work. Yeah, right? we're doing all the talking. <laughs> Come on, you guys. Discussion? <clears throat> all those in favor? Opposed? Motion's approved. And the public hearings for those two uh, zoning requests will be Monday night at 6.55. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, discussion possible action regarding city-owned property, the 20-foot strip adjacent to and west of 1511 Freer Street as to a request by Anthony and Angela Herrera to deed part of the area, a 10-foot strip, and the need for a storm sewer, storm sewer easement. As I recall, this was before the council on Monday and was directed to come here. Um, back in 1968, uh, the, when the uh, park, I believe it's Park View Addition uh, subdivision was created, there's a number of changes with easements and pedestrian accesses and so forth. There's a 28 a 20 foot wide parcel that extended from Freer Street up to Laurel Avenue. And at one point, uh, that, that 20 foot area was deeded, in 1968 was deeded to the city of Hudson. In 1970, the developer deeded the east 10 feet of the south half of that to the adjacent owner, which now, the, the is the lot that Herrera has just recently purchased. Now, it couldn't be deeded because the city already owned it. You can't deed property that you don't own. So that created some confusion. The issue basically hasn't been an issue for a long time. However, the Herrera's just recently purchased the property and would like the city to deed the east 10 foot of that 20 foot area to the city of Hudson. Tom Zuli and I have looked at the issue, and the reason Tom has been involved is because there's a storm sewer main that runs through this 20-foot wide parcel. <coughs> um, there's no stormwater easement specifically, so Tom and I are recommending that, and what complicates it even a little bit further, makes it a little bit unusual, is that the, the storm main does not run in between the two, the east and west side of this parcel. It runs diagonally from the middle on the north part down to the southeast corner. And for the city of Protect itself to be able to maintain that stormwater main, we need to get an easement 10 feet on each side. And what we're suggesting is we'll deed the 10 foot area requested by the Herraras back to them if they pay for a survey to identify the location of the stormwater easement and then enter into an agreement with the city 
for uh, a stormwater easement because the city has to get access. Also, the agreement will talk about what can and cannot be done within that easement area. And so the other part of the recommendation is for the Herrera's to, instead of the city saying, okay, we'll sell it to you for a dollar or we'll sell it to you for $2,500 or whatever, the, the expense of getting the 10 foot wide area is paying for the survey and paying for any other costs that has to do with deeding the property between the city of Hudson and the Herrera's. So all we're doing is cleaning up the situation and the city gets in return for deeding the property over, we get a stormwater easement so we have a right to get in and maintain access and maintain that stormwater. Now the issue with the easement is, is that the easement will, will encumber part of the Harar's existing property and they understand that. Why would you not do that to the other lot then too? We will. We're going to we're going to go back. There's uh, without me going into about a 20 minute story, Fred. Well, no, no, I didn't but mean to do that. But the uh, we plan on going back and cleaning up. Okay. The easement will will be over the entire area. Okay. But um, but you, you'll probably see this down the road a little bit as uh, Liz and I. Uh, because there's some things that was done at the county assessment records office that complicated this issue a little bit. But we're trying to just get, because the Herrera has made the request, we want to try to, it's taken longer than what we anticipated to get to this point. We want to get that addressed, get their request taken care of, then we'll address the remainder of the parcels. So will the city have what it needs to yes. maintain the? We'll have a 20 foot wide easement, 10 feet on each side of the storm. And the reason we just need 20 feet because it's not a real deep storm sewer. So by doing this, they're actually putting a larger encumbrance on their to some degree on their existing property. Yeah, to some degree, yeah. Because of the way the pipe swings across there. Yeah. What do you need from us on this? Just a recommendation to dispose of the property with the conditions I explained. I will so move. <laughs> Second. All right, moved and seconded. Discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion's approved. Uh, any other business? Um, anything? Well, the, f the first meeting in August we will not schedule because that would be next Tuesday um, and there's no specific subject so we will not meet on next Tuesday, August 2nd. Uh, the next meeting would be, because we get five, Monday, five Mondays in August, we'll wait till the fourth Tuesday and meet then. That gives us a week and a half prior to the council meeting. So, so, you're looking at so August, August 23rd will be the Kennedy date. Hey, Denny, at our last meeting, I think I asked about the widening of the 11th Street Bridge and you were going to discuss something with the DOT. Um, and I forgot that you'd ask. Okay. No, well, let's, I'll get it in a minute so I, I remember. Thanks. Anything else? Motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. <laughs> They're going to make you do it, Frank. <laughs> all right. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? We stand adjourned. Thanks, everybody. Thank you for your time.